to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, we thank you for this evening and thank you for all that are here. We just ask that you be with all of our citizens throughout the city. And we ask that we be mindful of all their wishes and do our best to, to make this the best city in Georgia. All these things we pray in your name. Welcome everyone here tonight. Uh, first time on our agenda is consideration to approve the agenda. I would, would like to make one addition initially, and that would be for an executive session to discuss litigation. Uh, is there <laughs> any other uh, changes or amendments? Uh, Ms. McGrew. I'd Okay. I think that could be under the old business, don't you think? <laughs> why don't we just, uh, why don't we move it to the very beginning of that one and uh, then if they don't want to stay those that are here, then the rest of the meeting you don't have to. So that would be uh, back item, just above item A there. Motion a second. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed no. All members voting for the motion. <coughs> okay. We uh, have uh, the minutes from April the uh, second in your agenda package. Uh, are there any uh, corrections or changes to be made to those? Not. I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes of April the second, 2015. Second. Have a motion and a second. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed no. All members voted for the motion. Okay, now our 10 minute public input, which we all know many times will turn into more than 10 minutes, but you know, we're here at this time to listen to whatever uh, you would like to, to say, whatever comments you would make. It's not necessarily a time in which we get into a discussion or an argument back and forth. It's back, uh, generally, it's, it's sort of a monologue. You speak before this entire council so you know that everyone has heard you, okay? And then we will consider what you've said. Now, if, if someone has a question, a council member may ask to uh, uh, ask a question if, if they find that necessary. We'll certainly allow that to happen. We'll make sure everyone gets their questions answered but uh, uh, since these issues are not always on the agenda and uh, council prepared for them then you can't really uh, you know we, we need a little more time there to deal deal with these once the request has been made that's usually for the newer subjects which is may, may or may not be those on this uh, first uh, uh, person on is Jim Winden Mr. Mayor, Council, um, I've spoken to the Council a number of times and the topic has always been the same, it's Wooded Mountain Trail. I'm going to keep my remarks brief because I know there's several people that, uh, that also want to speak on the same topic, but I'm not here to, to do anything except to lay down a challenge to the members of the Council. I don't think that most of you have done your homework. It's my opinion, and I think it's a fact, that the streets, uh, as looked into by our city attorney, were legally signed off on years ago. There was no difference between the signing off of Wooded Mountain Trail and accepted by the city uh, as compared to any other street that was legally accepted. A year ago, this council voted to accept Wooded Mountain Trail, which was already done. To me, it was kind of like voting to have the sunrise in the morning. It was already a done deal. Uh, but 
the contention since then has been that Wooded Mountain Trail was simply accepted at that time. And the residents of Wooded Mountain Trail have been suffering under the condition of that street for some time, for years as a matter of fact. And to, uh, to try to put it in perspective for those council members who may not be familiar with the history of this, Wooded Mountain Trail was deviated from by the developer with the cooperation, and that's a kind word, of a previous council. It was never involving the residents of the street. The residents of the street had no knowledge that that was going on. And in fact, now the street is not up to code. Emergency vehicles can't, trans, uh, can't drive up and down it without great difficulty. It's unsafe for pedestrians. It's unsafe for children. And something needs to be done. And we've been waiting a long time to have this happen. Now, I challenge, again, the council members who are unfamiliar with this to do your due diligence. Look into the facts. I know there's been a lot of emotion around the street and the condition of it. Put that aside and look at legally what the facts are and then look at the condition of the street. And I think that those of you with an open mind will come to the same conclusion that any reasonable person would. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Andy Potts. My name is Andy Potts. This is my family. So when I talk about safety for my family, these are who I'm talking about. I just want you guys to put some eyes on my family to know that these are real people when I talk about safety of my children. And, um, so you guys know that. Uh, a brief history of Wooded Mountain Trail. When the economy crashed, the developer in our neighborhood failed, leaving our neighborhood in peril. First, the city failed to oversee the construction of the street in the first place. <coughs> Wooded Mountain Trail does not follow the Unified Development Code or any other city ordinance or specification. They let the developer construct our road with no regard for actual design. Second, the city failed to maintain the proper bonds that protect the residents and city against this exact situation we're in. If these bonds were in place, I would be home enjoying dinner right now. Third, the city stamped and filed legal documents that show our street was public as early as 2006. This was done through improper methods and channels with no regard for the city charter. Why has nothing been done since? <clears throat> for the past seven years, I have been working with the city to make our streets safe for children, adults, and vehicles, as well as properly deal with the stormwater issues. The stormwater is damaging our property to the street and right of way. There's plenty of money in the stormwater fund to deal with these issues. If we can spend millions of dollars on golf courses and unusable council chambers, then we can surely fix safety issues. The last council meeting, a claim was made that the residents were somehow responsible or caused these problems. That assessment was poorly articulated and very misguided. There is not enough room for two vehicles, fire trucks, trash trucks, ambulances, UPS, USPS, FedEx, city vehicles, or any other vehicle to safely pass each other on our street. This causes many of us to drive into the grass or other people's yards, yards causing further damage. Sending the police to give us a ticket, as was suggested at the council meeting, will not solve the safety and water issues. The city has a special opportunity to properly fix their mistakes without involving lawyers and hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars. This problem will not go away on its own. It is just getting worse with each passing day. There is some fear that if they fix our street, it will set precedent. I would say that fixing the city's mistakes and creating a safe environment for all residents is a positive precedent. Who would argue against that? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nick, I'm sorry, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't actually read your last name. Is it S-A? It's S-A-W-K-H. So okay. okay. S-A-W-K, thank you. Good evening, thank you. Uh, my name is Nate Sock, I live at 509 Wooden Mountain Trail. Um, I've lived there for four years. Um, I've seen some of the drainage issues that's going on on our street. Came down this week and I uh, pulled some of the engineering plans and plans that are recorded downstairs. And um, you know, reviewing what you guys approved, um, the road is definitely not built for your approved design plans. And 
you know, I'm not just talking about cross slopes of road because the road does not have the proper cross slope. You guys approved or the planning department approved or, you know, the, the mayor signed off on. Um, I mean, we're missing drainage systems. We have 20, 20 foot wide drainage easements that has a two foot wide conveyance dish, two to one slopes, geofabric for erosion control in it. It's not there. There's no conveyance system. It was never installed. You know, it was, you know, conveyed to the city back in 2006. I have a final plat that shows you guys took ownership in 2006. The planning director signed off then. The mayor signed off then. And it needs to be installed. You guys need to maintain and, you know, properly take care of the storm drainage system. You own it. And you guys do own it. I'm not going to go through details now, but I, you know, and I appreciate you guys listening to us tonight. But I would definitely, you know, respectfully request to meet with you guys, either your staff or individually, and go through the hot facts that, you know, we've looked at, researched, pulled up. And these are not, you know, touchy feely subjects. These are facts. <coughs> this is a failure of the engineering department, the inspectors, to do their job. I mean, you guys approve plans, the developer hired a contractor, the contractor built the road that did not meet the design plans that were approved. Cross slopes are not met. Drainage systems are missing. We have property damage on several homeowners in the neighborhood that need to be addressed. You guys are conveying stormwater that you do not have an easement for. You know, one and a half, two acres of stormwater across people's front yards. That's like 13 cubic feet of water a second, like 25 feet of storm. It's like 100 gallons of water a second. You guys have caused some serious property damage. All we're asking is for, you know, the city, the council members to get with us, help us out. We've got a problem we need to address. You know, and you know, that's, that's what you guys are here to do, to help us. We just want the problem to be addressed. The plans that were approved, you know, that are recorded <coughs> downstairs, you know, to, to make sure it's built done right. You know, you spend a lot of money in the house. It's a nice neighborhood. You know, $360,000, $400,000 in the house. <laughs> and then you find out that, you know, by a house, a lot of people don't have an engineering degree or you know, a lawyer's degree to understand what this is. <laughs> to buy something, spend a lot of money on it, they expect it to be right. Well, it wasn't right. It was a failure. Now we're just trying to figure out how to make it right for these people. So, you know, my phone number, I think, is up there. I'll, I'll give you a way to contact me. But I'd like to spend some time down you know, with you and your staff and figure out what we're going to make this right. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. Um, as well as the other two, I think it's been very well done. Uh, the question I have is on the, on the stormwater issue, do, how much do we know is coming down from the street versus it's coming, because all the houses are on the hill that are coming from one house to the next house. It's my understanding from some of our people that a, a much larger portion of the damage that's coming from the from the stormwater drainage is coming from the upgrading resident. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, good question. And, and is it okay if I coach you and hand you something? Sure. Okay, so, do you all want to talk? You want to explain? I'll take two minutes and, like I said, I'll take what happens. Do you have a copy for each? Yeah, I got two, like 30 copies. So. <laughs> One or the I was expecting it, and I didn't want you to listen to us. I was actually expecting to talk tonight. And, uh, I, I know it's longer than two minutes, but right? you know, like I said, we got to get this thing yeah. done. So the road was actually designed with about 1.67% cross slope. So 
the way that the lots are graded is half the lot drains to the back towards the main road. Portions, depending on what lot you're in, drain towards the front of the road or, or what on trail. So what really should happen is the water should sheet flow off the front of the properties, hit the road, and drain north. The heavy yellow line that you see is a 20-foot uh, wide uh, excuse me, drainage easement that's, uh, as you can see, right below this giant red box here, you see kind of this very faint kind of yellow outline highlighted area. It says two foot flat bottom ditch, two to one side slopes. Um, excuse me on this, I'm going to say this wrong, but it's a pyramid lined ditch. So what is that? It's a geotextile. Okay, so this dish is two foot wide, it's about as wide as the podium. It's about a foot and a half, two feet deep, so it's about, you know, about knee height with two long slopes. So if you look at pictures one and two in the lower right hand corner, I don't see that. It's not there. So what's supposed to happen is the water's supposed to sheet flow off the residence, drain across the road, which, which again is, does not have the proper cross slope because it was down Sign is a 1.67% cross slope. <coughs> Hit that ditch, which again is about as deep as my knee. Okay, it's probably about as wide as you know the piece of this couple here. And then convey down the road. <laughs> so, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> 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 so so with is that ditch? That ditch, if you look at it, it's re actually referred to as ditch B. You go downstairs, it's actually a profile on that ditch. That ditch is not just a ditch. It, it, it really acts as a storm pipe. It is actually a municipal system. That, that's what that 20 foot wide easement's for. It was conveyed from you know, the developer to convey, you know, convey the storm drainage across their property into the uh, area inlet under the road and, and into a 24 inch uh, quarter gate belt pipe. I was out there yesterday and uh, I, I First of all, this is an excellent map, and I, I, I agree with the yellow um, outline of the ditch. And the ditch uh, probably right now is not two feet; it's probably somewhat less. Um, we should also ask citizens not to put grass clippings over there because it just creates more problems. But with that said, my question to, to start with, though, was. <clears throat> I see where it crosses down here, and I walked down there and, and actually looked at where it is crossing. My question, though, is the water that's coming down from the back side of these homes that are going into where in number five is where it's in red down here at the bottom left. Mm -hmm. How much of that water? Because what I'm hearing from our people is that the majority of that water, and, and we could be wrong on this, uh, that the majority of the water is coming from the other residents' backyard. Now, I agree with you in total that we need to clean that ditch out. Yeah. I and mean, that would, that, that's definitely going to help. It, it, and the, the backyard's different. It's a different thing. You know, everything's got grass. You have, you have a higher level of permeability and everything else back there. But really what's happening is, and, and, and I'm sorry, we're taking longer than two minutes. We can, I did more than have to the staff, meet you guys, you know, later on. But if you look at pictures three and four, um, number three, for example, well, let's start with number four. So number four, we have a 0.1% cross slope. Point, we're not talking about 1%, you know, 1% cross slope is one foot and 100 feet. Point one is like one inch and 100 feet. So it's flat, there's no cross slope. So what's happening is, you know, number four is here. So what's happening is that the road's flat. So what happens is the storm drains runs down the road, it turns flat. And there's no there's no ditch over here. So there's nowhere for it to I agree with that part. So it runs flat, and if you look at picture one, uh, number three, it actually turns towards 521 Wooden Mountain Trail. And it actually is a cross slope going away from the drain. Now, if you go out there and you look at the drain, there is a cross slope drain into the drain in front of the house. But what happens is the water runs down the road, it gets flat here, and it gets directed across their front yard, then it sheet flows between the two houses. Nick, I understand and, I understand what you're describing, but you're not answering my question. Well, you're saying the backyard has nothing to do with the front of the roof. The backyard drains to the back, and it's a separate 
but, separate and in. But is that a bigger issue than no? I agree. No. I agree with what you got here. I, I would be more than happy to meet staff out there. Well, that, that's probably what we should, yeah. should do, Mr. Mayor. That's probably something. We need to have our engineer just meet you out there. I, but I agree with you that bitch. I mean, we're happy to meet you guys out there, the staff, whoever, and, and walk through with you guys. By the way, thank you for your time. I'm sorry for too long. No, thank you for your preparation and your presentation. Very good. Thank, thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. I apologize for the funny accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a contact. <laughs> <laughs> you got a some restraint to approve because of possible uncertainties with the contract or with the apparent <clears throat> But my understanding is this is a design build contract and the selected contractor is responsible for the design and construction. In addition, the contractor must hire an architect and any engineers required to complete the work and provide a usable fire station. A complete <coughs> fire station. I also understand the city retains the right to approve or reject design options. And again, this is my understanding, the any delay on approving this low bid will cause a major delay in bringing this station online, and there's a potential for a major cost increase. Therefore, in my opinion, based upon the contractual assurances associated with the current contract proposal and the fact that the city staff has reviewed the proposal and recommended the board to the low bidder. And lastly, this low bid was provided by a local company. I would suggest the council award this contract to the parent low bidder get the construction of Laurel Canyon Fire Station underway. That appears to me to be a win-win for all the parties involved. <coughs> Thank you. Lee Lusk. Um, I want to pass out these uh, signs here so y'all can kind of pass them around and, and look at these. But real brief, this is about the uh, the Burntown House on Wall Street. I know you're all familiar with it. Um, these are pictures that we had produced through a CAD system with two scale drawings of our property showing these, uh, the sign location that we're asking for the bearings for. So we wanted to show you what it will look like after we build the sign. And this is coming from the other direction. As you can see here, this is going to be the, the point of the map. So I'm going to pass this out so you can see it's a scale drawing while we're. I believe that, that sign, the, the setback, is that correct too, to where the sign would be placed? It is. The sign location is correct. The only thing I will say is um, the pictures here were from uh, a few months ago, so that's actually a 120 square foot sign, and we're now asking for 80. So that picture is actually quite a bit larger than what we would have been to build. Uh, but regarding this house, I know y'all had made a vote, and I wanted to uh, come back and uh, ask for reconsideration on this matter. And I want to make sure the charge had all the facts uh, you know, to, to make a, uh, a better informed decision. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. But basically, we have a piece of property, and for the sake of time, I'll cut right to it. We have one option to generate income off this property for the house burned down. And our one and only option is to build a sign. Um, the setbacks of the current house and uh, many other issues we are not able to build back. Uh, the house has been hit twice. It sits eight foot from the road driveway. It's been hit twice in the eight years we've owned it. Uh, we'd like to be a liability to us to build back 
it'd be grandfathered in, which has all kinds of legal uh, ramifications if we were to build back. Uh, the size of the footprint is 700 square feet, so the uh, cost of it would be astronomical per square foot compared to a traditional two or 3,000 square foot home. And the rent in that uh, area that wouldn't constitute, um, nonetheless, it, it's just it's the only option we have is to build a sign. So we're asking uh, for y'all to give us an opportunity to build the generous and make them off this lot to pay our taxes. Because if, if, if we were to tear down the house and it was just a vacant lot, we would build pay our taxes in perpetuity. We're asking for some option to uh, to build a sign. Uh, I know they're not very popular, um, but I'll give you a perfect example of um, the Wheeler House Wedding Venue and Ball Ground. We want to, we've been wanting to advertise to this market um, while less still having as many brides as they have drive up to that uh, college every day. Uh, We've been looking for a sign in that area for a few years now. I currently rent three signs from one of the local gentlemen who has uh, signs throughout Highway 20 and, and throughout the county, and we rent three of his. And we've been actively <coughs> seeking one, but there's none available. And uh, I want to put my sign on the north side view, uh, the Wheeler House. And we've actually got an extra vinyl we can put up as soon as we build the sign, because we want to market to that, uh, you know, Gray Sky, the Lower Canyon Market, and we also want. Uh, the Walt Lesko, uh, or I should say the Reinhardt Brides, uh, the Reinhardt girls to see uh, this sign going up there. So we have a reason to, to build it, make it look good. You know, have a nice rock base, it'll be obviously built to code, it's going to look good. We have a reason to make sure the grass is cut, the flowers are out. Um, but right now, we're in a rock and a hard spot because we have no option uh, to pay our taxes. We have no way to generate any income off this property. Uh, when the house burned down, we were not made whole. Uh, so at this point, we're, we're, we're uh, coming back, it's kind of a last ditch effort, um, pat in hand, begging, pleading to reconsider. Um, again, we have no other option to, to generate income off this property. Um, we have started asking for 120 square feet, which is what that, that picture is. Um, we, we had said the city had said 50 was the, the max, I guess, or had a moratorium or something around 50. So we come back and we met in the middle, we're actually a little bit below the middle, come back at 80. And after the vote two weeks ago, the only response we got from the city attorney was just a one sentence, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't approved. Um, so it kind of hurt feelings after we get that one sentence, after all this time and money and, and uh, a fees we've been paying our attorney and to get one response. Um, so just want to make sure you had all the, all the, you know, the facts from our point of view. We, we basically want to come here tonight as the owner, um, sharing our point of view. And uh, we own a lot of property in the, the city and we have a, uh, hopefully a very long-term relationship here and uh, I know this is kind of small potatoes and we hate to even make a big deal out of it um, but at the end of the day we've got to have a way to generate income off this property we cannot bear taxes on something that's just sitting there vacant so um, yes sure thank you how large is that piece of property um, I should have a plan I, I meant to bring this but I pulled it up on my phone as we were sitting here waiting um, so I'll tell you exactly the property is 52 by 100, so it's 5,200 square feet, which is one ninth of an acre. So it's not even, uh, it's 5,200 square feet. The house sits seven feet from the right away. Now, this house, when it's built, obviously sat outside the right away, but the roads been widened twice. They put in that new uh, drainage area. When they put in a sewer, they put the drainage on top. And when they did that, the city, the, the DOT and the city took more right away. So now this house sits right on the road. Um, we're, we're scared about building it back. Um, it's been hit twice in the eight years we've owned it. Uh, so it's, it's, it's certainly a liability for us. Putting up a beautiful sign there you know, with a nice rock base and, uh, and having a landscape beautiful lot there, we feel like it's really not only the only scenario for us, but really a win-win-win for everybody. That was me an opportunity to rent my sign. Uh, for a wedding venue, and then we can rent the south side to, you know, to whoever. Um, and also keep in mind, we're 0.1 miles from the county, and right there at Hospital Road, uh, there's, there's signs that are in the county. Um, so we're not that far from, from other signs of, of bigger size. They're 120 square foot, we're asking for 80. So, um, Lee, what is the square footage that, I'm sorry, you were part of Oh, that's okay. Go ahead, huh? I'm sorry. What is the, the square footage that you're asking for now? It's 120 square feet. Bill, we're asking for 80. You're asking for 80? Yes, sir. And what is the zoning right now or the? Uh, uh, CBD, central. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you know what it is? Uh, is it CBD? Right. Yeah. It's uh, Central no. Business District. 64. Ken, Ken, Ken would, it would be CBD. I don't know. Ken, Ken would know the answer. Well, Since the mayor and council members, that property is on GC General Commercial, and uh, that is a uh, overlay standard uh, that requires a monument sign 50 square feet. That's the maximum 50 square feet. Yes. Now we called a gentleman who owns the one gentleman that I ran three signs from, and his average sign size is 120 square feet. He's got one that was 80 square feet, and he says the hardest one to rent. So in the very beginning, he said, absolutely, you got to have 120 square feet. It's not physically or economically feasible to rent an 80 square feet. Um, he has occupancy rates or vacancy rates of 50 percent sometimes. So your request is for 120, not no, 80. No, ours, no, 80. 80. 80. ours is just for 80. Yeah, we, we reduced it from what we originally were asking. What's your business? Is it well, I own a wedding venue and rental property and just a general real estate. You own a what? A wedding venue. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. We wanted to put, we've been looking for a sign to advertise our wedding venue to, to the uh, Round Heart, you know, market and to Lower Canyon Big Canoe. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Big, uh, Great Sky. Yeah. Um, and we can't find one. We've been looking for years. We currently have three other sign locations throughout the county where we rent signs for our wedding venue. And this, this location right here, we feel like would be a win-win. Well, I, I can assure you people that Great Sky Laurel Canyon, know where you are. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Lee, Lee, you said you had a sign already ready to go up. Will it go up on the 80 foot, foot square foot sign? Yeah, yes, we have a we have a vinyl already ready. Yeah, it's, for, well, it's for 120 square feet, but they can wrap around and pull it tight so it, it okay. fits. Um, I would like to try to put this on a work session. Can we do that? Well, I think I think since we this was a potential litigation and we discussed this in executive session at the last meeting. My guess is that we we may be able to do that to some degree this evening, okay. since we have a, a already have an executive session. So okay. should we bring, bring Sandy forward on on the her agenda? She's added it to not put it out trade. May we take these signs to our yes, please. Session yeah, keep them absolutely, and keep in mind those pictures are 120 square feet. We're asking for 80. Uh, we, we didn't redo them because we had those made uh, a few months ago. So that sign right there is going to actually be smaller than that by see about 33 percent. I would like to support this, but it, this is a variance to our code, and I would like to restrict it to the current owners. So in other words, when the property transfers, your variance will disappear for that sign. Would that work for you? Would we have to remove the sign if we sold it? Well, yep. it, yes. Or, or, restrict reduce the size to the code we don't want to have permanent variances existing in our city I understand. so we're yeah. trying to help you sure that not the next time and per, perhaps because it is such a small lot it would be sold and together with another lot anyway it, it so probably would might, yeah. might not make any difference yeah uh, that, would, that would work for us it would work for me so yeah if, if you want my support that that's something i would like to do is the left the department right adjacent to the right hand side we do yes yeah. So they're even closer to the street. Yeah, they it's are. Conceivably, you, you might sell that lot with those when you do sell it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else? And the only thing I was going to say is, we, uh, the only thing I was going to say in closing is, uh, is our time about to look through uh, history of, of zoning appearances only for City of Kent, for the county as well. You cannot find any other example even remotely close to ours. So variances are truly for someone in a rock and a hard spot, someone who's trying to make something work. Uh, ever in the history of the county or the city we have found as a house burned down that sat in the right away that was grandfathered in that now can be built back and um, you know and sign variance was approved so uh, and you know, it's not like you're going to get this request once a year or once a month it's, it's truly a rarity um, and that's why we're asking for this this variance and we appreciate your consideration the Kool-Aid stand would probably be even bigger variance right <laughs> yeah. I mean what, what else can you do with it? Nothing. we want you to Nothing. pay your taxes we can't generate revenue, you can't pay your tax. Yeah, the, the setbacks allow for, for basically a playground. And we, with two cars already hitting this house, we're not going to build a playground for our apartment uh, uh, tenants to enjoy. So there's literally no no option. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Dobbs and uh, Ms. Booth. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I am Byron Dobbs, 
I live in Riverstone Village, and this is not my wife. <laughs> She's my neighbor. <laughs> I said the man looked at her hair and thought we were a couple. <laughs> we're here about a different subject. We have a problem in our community with garbage collection. Gloria is a nurse at Northside Hospital and goes to work early in the morning, gets up at like four something, and garbage trucks come up behind her unit up on the hill to the various uh, medical facilities, I suppose, and pick up garbage at various times. What time do they come, Gloria? Sorry, at 2.30. Depends on the, the morning that they're coming. Every morning's different. They're anywhere from 2.30 to 6 o'clock. What company, what company is this? Do you know? No, I do okay. not. I have been up there and I thought the company name would be on the dumpsters, but I understand the dumpsters has nothing to do with the trash bin that company. Okay. The police uh, PR man was our community one time and we talked with him about it and we said we, we don't know who they are. I've looked and one has Atlanta waste on it, but he said that doesn't necessarily mean they pick it up. I said well, we aren't up there at one thirty in the morning. He said we can be. So we figured the police could figure out who who's picking it up. But she lives on the Right, the side that directly backs up to that, and they all are very much disturbed by the thing. We understood there's an ordinance that they shouldn't pick up before That's five correct. or six in the morning. That's correct. Uh, do uh, does how often is a, a, a regular day they do that? Yes. Same day every same morning. Which would be morning. what morning? During the night Monday night Tuesday. <coughs> Monday night Tuesday. Okay. I have seen heard they did not. Sometimes they don't. I used to take notes. I was writing down the times. <laughs> and it's anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. <coughs> and it is very, very long. Is that for y'all's community or is that for a business? It's businesses and apartments and medical facilities. The, so. the medical facilities up behind us that are on Reinhardt College Parkway back right up to the line, <laughs> our units are down below them. So the noise comes right down the hill. Right. Okay. I'm a heavy sleeper. Maybe, maybe. I'm here. We'll take care. Maybe we can have somebody go out there at, on a Monday night real late. On Monday morning, they come at 6. Monday, they come at 6 in the morning? Oh, uh, other, other Tuesdays, I haven't had anyone to come. The other mornings during the night, they're there from 2.30 to 4.30. They come every night? Oh, every, every, every night? Every Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. But Monday night, Tuesday morning. Oh, okay. 6 in the morning. Okay. After 12. But well, we would appreciate it if you would right. help us enforce your order. We'll try. I mean, I've been sleeping on my couch a lot of times, knowing that I'm going to be, they're going to wake me up, and I can't go back to sleep. You not read a book, so I can't go back to sleep. Her bedroom's on the back of the unit, and the uh, couch is on the front. Yes. I just happen to know that. I just agenda uh, I will read each of these and if, if there's any of these that you would like to pull off for further discussion uh, let me know uh, uh, first of all approval of a nomination of Regine Portery uh, to the uh, Canton Tree Commission uh, second reading and approval of the LED lighting ordinance approval of mid-year budget of amendment to allow for additional staff item D approval of SPLOSH 6 budget amendment uh, and once again, all these are things that we did discuss at the, uh, the uh, previous meeting. Item E, approval of Planning Commission recommendation on case CUP 1502-001, conditional use approval, Church of Isaac's Keep at 210 East Main Street. Item F, approval of recommendation to increase wholesale water and sewer rates. And that is wholesale now. Uh, approval of resolution to accept Northside Cherokee Boulevard. Approval of authorization to sign termination of declaration of reciprocal easements for Canton Textile Mills. Canton Mills. Item I, approval of appeal of Canton Oversight Committee decision on CASA 1083 Marietta Highway. Item J, approval of the City of Canton slash Cherokee County Animal Control Intergovernmental Agreement. Uh, K, approval for the mayor to sign the necessary paperwork for the city of Canton slash Board of Education land swap uh, following review by the city attorney. Okay, now, are there any of those that need to come off further discussion? If 
No, I don't hear that. What's your difference, sir? If I want a divorce, if you want to discuss it further, we need to pull it off. I don't Otherwise, we just vote. I just don't want to vote for it. Well, you, you don't have to vote for it. But if you're going to want to vote no, one of them is going to come off. Yeah. Okay. Which, like which one do you want off? Okay. Okay. Adam K. Okay. Of... Approval for the mayor to sign the necessary paperwork for the city of Canton Board of Education okay. land swap. Okay. Uh, that will come off, and we will. How about any of the others? If not, I'm going to a motion to approve those. All we'll move to approve. With exception of Jay. Motion and second. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. Second. Um, I have a second. And uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those no. Okay, I'll make a vote for the motion. All right, now item K, approval of the mayor to sign necessary paperwork for the city of Canton Sykes Board of Education land swap following review by the city attorney. Move to approve. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any other discussion or questions? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no? No. All members vote for the motion with the exception of Mr. Huff. Thanks. Okay. <coughs> okay, under old business, uh, uh, Ms. Grew, I believe the, the first item up we've moved there was for a discussion on Woody Mountain Trail. Right. This has been hanging over our heads for many years. Woody Mountain Trail needs to be resolved. I would like to see us receive a hard estimate from our engineer and our city manager. I got an email from Mr. Cummins the other day saying that to do curbs, gutters, no storm drain would be between 107 and 107,200 and 128,400. That was in his email. So I would like to have a hard estimate and vote at our voting meeting in May to approve work to fix the street. Okay. Scott? I missed. Did you say, uh, I believe my email said no storm drains. That was curbs and gutters. Curbs, and gutters, no storm drains. No storm drains. Okay. That was what was there. <clears throat> uh, just for information, I'll give you how that calculation is derived so that going forward you can do it roughly yourselves. The run curb with a drainage next to it is about $14 a lineal foot. Wooded Mountain Trail is about 1,800 feet long, I believe. So if you're doing two sides, you get uh, approximately 3,600 feet at $14 a foot. To just resurface will run somewhere from 26 to $30 a lineal foot and then whenever you do resurface streets, you're faced with an approximate charge of $10,000, which is mobilization. So when you do streets, it's always ideal to do as much as you can in one area so that you can spread that mobilization cost over the uh, a greater number of footage. But that's how those figures were derived. That's an approximation. Uh, to do it correctly, I guess, uh, to get anything harder than that, we'd really have to put out a, a, an RFP to see what we would get. Uh, since it's over $100,000, it would have to be a, a, a proposal <coughs> which we could bring back in, and you could decide whether or not to do it, and or to reject all bids based on of course on the cost but that's really the only way we can get a hard bid that i can think of other than what i've already given you as a estimate actually the the law has recently changed it was actually changed last year it's now two hundred and fifty thousand. so you can just you can just get a, you can just get quotes so we can just get quotes on okay um do I need to make a motion to get these quotes or is that something that we can just, ask the city manager? No, I think to? we just make sure that it's on our uh, next agenda for discussion and uh, <coughs> uh, uh, on our uh, work, work session for um, May, what, 6th, 7th? I believe it's not all. <coughs> okay, all right. Uh, you read the case. The quote you want is for what we discussed in the email list. Yes. Okay. Uh, and as a, an aside to that, would you also include what it would cost with having a train in there? Just for that informational purposes. 
because your email stated curbs, gutters, and no storm drain. So what you're talking is an embedded street storm drain? Yes, please. Okay. As, as a side. So that we we'll know how much that would cost. Is that the one that was being referred to that's shown, supposedly shown in the plans, but not there, or what? It's where, where, no, where oh, it's it, it would be on the where the ditch is right now, the storm ditch. I, 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 think, I think the ditch is on the ditch. You make sure you're all talking about the same thing. Yeah, that's what I'm Because when you say an embedded storm drain, that's not what, that's not a ditch. That would be a high ditch. You want to replace the ditch. No. Or do you want them to just build what they were to describing, it. which is the, the uh, system, no. the map, and all that? Which will solve our problem well, the that, best That may be a different question altogether. So. Okay. <laughs> what, what I want is the situation resolved in the best way possible. Right. And you, and you can come, uh, just come back and tell us what that is. Or is the best way possible, meaning an embedded street drain? The best way possible is not always and almost always isn't in this inexpensive way. Okay. We'll get options. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, I know the, the folks that are here, they're living on Woody Mountain Trail, <coughs> would like to have some type of uh, time schedule. I don't say we have to be firm, firm, but I, I know that's what they're looking for uh, through some individual conversations if we and I understand what Mr. Cunning is saying that $10,000 just for mobilization but they're going to have to mobilize that and my question would be Mr. Cummings and maybe uh, Mr. Uh, Patton is there any progress on the sale of those lots up <coughs> above uh, what's, what's the area called um, <coughs> where you turn by the rugs and go straight up what, <coughs> Stargaze Ridge. Ridge. Yeah. Stargaze Ridge. Stargaze Ridge. Those those lots up there. So they're going to have to mobilize to do that, which means they could mobilize to do that. Turn right around and do Wood Mountain Trail. Follow me. Just you nod. Are you assuming you use the same contract or somebody else they use it? Well, sure. We can't all can't always do that. Well, you know, I mean, but we could. We, we, I think I think we need to we, we need to look at this information that's brought back at our next meeting, and well, I agree with yeah. you that we do need to set some sort of time frame. That's what they want, and, but I think we could move forward right now in cleaning out that ditch. Personally, I think the uh, mobilization is a minor detail compared to the to the degree that needs to work that needs to be done. And I don't think that well, should be a uh, something that holds up the project. I would hope not as well. Mayor, I'm asking yes. that Mr. Cummins bring back these estimates to our May 7th meeting so that we can vote and move at the May 21st meeting. Okay. I wonder if that will satisfy well, that, those that, in question. Right. They can nod. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, could we, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we address the ditch immediately to have that cleaned out. Exactly. I think that. Uh, I think all you got to do is that, that should not be a, a major problem there to do it. We just oh, get it done. Okay. Uh, I, I think you go ahead and make uh, uh, an effort and, and correct that. That's Mr. Greer. Next, would it not trail question? Yes, ma'am. The storm drain, um, whose picture I passed out at the last meeting, Mr. Cummins informed me that that was in the right of way belonging to the HOA. How can that be handled? It, it sticks up high. It's surrounded by rip and it just seems to be a bit dangerous. It's not, the one across from my house sits low to the ground and doesn't seem to be a, a huge danger. I have no problem with it. But the one across from, I don't know whose house it is, um, 521 and 519 just seems ill-built and dangerous. Uh, Mr. McCrew, that's, that's, I saw that yesterday, and it's low. It's much lower than the street level, and the riprap around it uh, would definitely pre prevent it or eliminate the safety hazard. 
And I, th I think the, I think the, uh, the, the homeowners association or community, whatever their names are, mm -hmm. have taken that on because it's brand new. It's not been there for long, and I think they took it on their own to have that fixed for the safety reasons. But that that looks to be brand new around there. I don't think anybody's going through that. Well, I don't, you know, I don't think any of us here at this table are engineers or really know how to solve that solve all the problems out there but we need to deal with professionals who know how to do it and and take their recommendation i think and glenn when you uh, prepare these numbers for miss mcgrew for next for the seventh will you have engineers go up there already have and have they looked at that really drain? have they looked at that drain that oh, you're talking about? Uh, they've even talked to the homeowners i've had our stormwater expert so they, they've got an opinion and, of that. And the problem is, is I realize that drain is higher or is high, but if you lower it or fill it in, you're going to de uh, defeat the purpose of which it's solved is to capture stormwater. So it, it, it's it's not a easily resolvable uh, situation. I mean uh, the distance of the opening is is standard i don't know how many we got i know we got of that type i know we got about 3500 storm drains they're seven inches it, it, yeah it's it, about seven inches it's seven which inches is, the act and so we get everything straight the drain itself is below the street grade yes and i think what miss mcgrew is talking about is is the opening where the water goes in am i right is that what you've been talking about yes okay that's seven and that's seven inches and then they come around and put riprap all the way around it so nobody's going in there the, the reason for that is so that as a significant stormwater flows into it it doesn't wash the earth away and cave in the idea of having a ditch or a drainage into it and that's why they put the stone in that's just recently. I mean, you look at the stones. That's pretty standard way of doing it. I, I don't know how many we have like that in the city, but that's not the only one. Who, who put the stone around in there? I don't know. I, I think the community uh, homeowners association hey, probably yeah. had the people that do our landscape probably did it. Uh, you know, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a residence, and it wasn't the city, so it had to be coming from the community <coughs> themselves had to take care of. It. Well, let's let's go ahead and move along here because we've. Uh, could I could I make one statement? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't it, mention it. Go ahead. Ms. McGill, I wonder if there's a possibility if this turns out to be an eight so way issue that you could just build a square fence around it. Not pretty, but certainly a safety issue. It would stop. It would stop any issues with regard to water flow. But it would sure stop the kids or anybody from getting injured. Because it really turns out to be H O A property. You get all kinds of issues with who does what. Water's got to get into it. You no, got to I mean, get around it. Just get in that mean like a, a chain link fence around it. Four, four square. It just it's stop up real no. quick. And hit you in the rut, stick stuff okay. against that. That's a, one at solution. It. I, I, I don't know what he's talking about. Talking anyway, about. Let's, let's, let's put that on for our next meeting and, and uh, move along with that. All right. Next item. Uh, discussion uh, and action of on design and construction management services for the fire station of the night. Mr. Grant? Mr. Grant? It's my item. Oh, yeah, his hand up. Oh, I'll be glad to let you have. You, you, <laughs> do you have anything to add to it? Go ahead. Well, I thought I was sure. introducing that yeah. item and discussing it. Well, well, you can. Sure. Uh, unless you want to change procedure, I don't know. Well, I, I thought we had discussed it last meeting, and maybe unless you had something new to add, I didn't know. Well, I was just going to further explain that there are two options that we've had RFPs out on. First was a design to build, which did include architectural services and engineering services. We had two bidders come into that, the low bid being 617,000 and change. And at the February meeting, uh, it was uh, requested that we look at a, a different methodology or a, another methodology of doing an architect 
who would then do the design and engineering plans and we would take those design and engineering plans and develop another RFP and put that RFP out to bid. Uh, we developed an RFP to get an, uh, architectural firms in. Uh, there are four that are uh, have submitted. Uh, all four of those present uh, a higher cost estimate than what our lowest bid is currently. Motion to approve the lowest bid. Yes, deal. Second. I haven't recognized anyone. I don't believe at this point. Did I? Wait, 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 wait. Did I? Did I recognize anyone? That's not I believe that is the chair's option to do so. Is that not, would you agree with that or not? I don't know. It seems like sometimes we follow the process. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, sometimes we I follow recognize the, you now, but that's what we need to be doing. We need to be motion. following the protocol. I, I want to make a motion to approve. Second. Now second. Okay, I have a motion to approve. And uh, I want to do a roll call vote on this. I think we probably need to do that. Uh, uh, let's have some discussion first, Mr. Grant. Yes, it, uh, I reviewed the video uh, online of our meeting on January 8th. Um, and the discussion of this topic uh, begins at two hours, nine minutes, and 48 seconds into the meeting. It was, was a long meeting. <laughs> uh, but at that time, the city manager said that six firms showed up for the pre-bid meeting. Uh, only two bids were received, and they were very different in range. Uh, he said both bids had numerous technical issues and recommended throwing out both bids for that very reason, uh, which included one of the bids that uh, was just a motion that we accepted. Um, at that time, he also recommended engaging an architect, as uh, the mayor originally suggested and stated that an architect would allow the county to approve the specs if the minimal understanding was passed uh, since that it stated that the county would have design input which the minimal understanding was, was later passed uh, so in my, in my opinion we should not be building a fire station without a detailed design plan and i mean for example there are new federal guidelines for uh, diesel exhaust fumes that must be incorporated into the new station our our RFP calls for an exhaust system capable of moving a minimum of 4,000 CFMs to be installed. Uh, I'm certainly no expert on diesel exhaust systems. Uh, may be wrong, but I did not see any mention of the exhaust systems included in the low bid, um, and I can't imagine that system be, to be inexpensive. Um, you know, all other credible bids and sources that we talked to have estimated a cost of a million dollars or more to build a fire station. The last station built by the county uh, in, in the past year or so cost approximately $1.3 million. Uh, I believe we should hire an architect um, that's designed other fire stations to design the station and then bid out uh, for construction of that station and hopefully to the, the low bidder uh, again would be the low builder on that plan. Um, we are obligated by the IGA to involve the county in the design of the fire station. I think we would run a risk of having them reject the station if it does not meet their standards. And then our own fire department would potentially be stuck with a substandard station. Um, so therefore, um, my suggestion would be that we, we hire an architect to design a station sure. and move forward that direction. Well, it, it's very simple, the, I think. The, the bid has a certified architect in the quote. <clears throat> now these issues that Mr. Grant brings up are issues that we should look at, then we'll bring them up. And if they're not, if the architect will then have to address those. If, if it requires additional cost, then we will address it at that time. But to move from a $670,000 start that includes that includes the architectural design and we do have plans you can see them in mr cummings office a big role like this it's not like we don't have plans we do we don't have the architectural plans but we got plans then if there's anything additional needs to be done which would be true even if we have an architect you've seen how great response we had but when when we did the sanctuary and we're still not in the sanctuary because we use a 
certified architect to come in privately and do it, and it's a disaster. Maybe not a disaster, but from the standpoint of being used, obviously we're not there yet. So although the 670000 might not be the final cost, it surely won't be reaching a million two, and a million two does not include the adding of requesting additional architectural uh, they are going to have to come in and do, to do that. So, and then you got the delay. I can't believe we're sitting here talking about this. There's got to be, there's got to be another reason other than just, Mr. Mayor, just to feel comfortable. I mean, how can we felt comfortable about the sanctuary and you see what you got us in? I mean, right here we've got everything in a nutshell that. We can oversee, and we got a dynamite uh, building inspection crew to see that it's done right. And if the county wants to come in, bring them in. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Scott? Uh, our intergovernmental agreement with the county includes the requirements as to the construction of that station, what we have to meet. And during the architectural design performed by Castile, they will be part of that process. Uh, the concept that we're not using an architect, we are using an architect. They are going to draw up the construction plans. They are going to use to get, bring in the engineering design. That is going to be reviewed by all parties involved before we put the first stick in the ground. So, to my mind, to take the risk of where we could be spending, first of all, we're going to spend 50 th plus thousand dollars for an architect. We have no idea in the world other than what the architect's estimates are to construct that building, the lowest being, and they're going to estimate high because I've never seen an architect come in and estimate low because if they estimate low and the bids are high, we blame the architect for some reason. So they're going to estimate, they're going to estimate high, and that was 888,000. I think was the lowest one. We're going to delay the project by five months at least, probably longer. Uh, I don't see the big risk. Oh, Mr. Rose, I have one question to for Hokey and some. Don't uh, isn't the bid really six seventeen? I think it's six seventeen. Six seventeen. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Seventy. So it's six seventeen. I, I we are in the process of swapping land with the county. Uh, we we've, we've acquired two buildings A and B. Our costs to rehab those buildings could be significant. We need this city needs every penny we can get. We are we got an item on the next item B on the agenda that could have an impact on our money. Uh, I just think we we will be in that building in three four months six months versus waiting. I would hate to have I I sat with a gentleman that lives in Laurel Canyon, and he made it very clear to me that his life was dependent on. Our emergency services. I would hate to have him come back to me and say you delayed this, and uh, for his wife to come back and say he's not here because of us. I, I, in saving money in the process, I, I just don't see why we shouldn't do this. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Well, I wanted to. I kind of agree, in a way, with Mr. Huffman. I look at we have six bids, four of them or over a million one of them is almost a million which is all they're all significantly so five of six are significantly higher than the lowest bid that you're, you're asking us to accept which tells me that we are either going to have significant cost overruns or we're going to have an inferior product you can always buy something cheaper um, there is an expression of penny wise and pound foolish. And in the pursuit of saving money, I'm afraid if you take this bid, you're going to be wind up regretting it in the long run. Um, every, as Mr. Grant pointed out, the county spends 1.2, 1.3 million to build a fire station. 
I went online today just doing random searches and everything I found said that one point something to two million dollars is normal for a fire station. So going back to what you Mr. Mayor said at one of the previous meetings, what do they think they know that nobody else seems to know? And it just seems to me, back to Mr. Huffman's point, why are we discussing this when it's so obviously that it's so out of line with every other estimate we've ever seen? Mr. Mayor. Scott? Uh, I'd like to, I don't usually like to rebut council members, but in this case, Mr. Young, I'd like to bring out a few facts. Number one, four of those are estimates. <clears throat> and they are not bids. So the four are, in, are architectural estimates. And uh, the second thing, which you might not realize, but I will bring out, is that you say 1.2 in the county and all of this. The lowest estimate from those four architects came from the same architect that designed the county stations. And that was 800,880, I believe. So again, these are estimates. These are not bids. <coughs> The contractor that we have locally is a highly reputable contractor. They have a 94 score. Now, I don't know what that score means, but I know that that score and that rating, if you look at it, there's 80-some thousand general contractors in the state of Georgia in there in the top 30%. We've seen their work. They're local, and we're going to just keep delaying it. I mean, this is your decision, but again, uh, I, I don't think we want to be the end of the year telling the people of Soleil we've got an empty spot up here and we're eventually going to build a fire station. Well, let's see what happens next year. Ms. Agra? I would be more comfortable hiring an architect to do a design and build from this, get an estimate for construction from those designs. And if you will indulge me, I reached out to two retired fire service personnel that I know. One is a retired chief and he has gone through building many stations. He says, I think an architect with knowledge of NFPA, ISO, and fire department needs and experience in government construction would be in on initial planning. He, she is a tremendous asset even in site search. Our specs were almost as big as an Atlanta phone book, detailed almost everything and he goes on, uh, that he would be leery of a bid on any construction that is 25% less than the rest of the pack. A retired Captain Fire Marshal I reached out to is said that over a million each, and that could be very conservative. I have a question. Um, the bids that we received before were thrown out for technical difficulties. I was wondering, and Mr. Castile's bid was one of those, what changed from then to now? What difficulties did it have and how were they corrected that this is on the table now to vote in favor of taking his bid? It had rejection, uh, technical difficulties before and was rejected and it's at, we're being asked to vote on it now, what changed? I think if you go back to my motion, I made a recommendation that we adopt Castile's bid and that the vote was three to three, a tie vote, and the mayor decided not to accept the bid. I don't recall, and I believe that was in the February meeting, and I do not recall any vote thereafter throwing out any bids. Now, January, I'm not privy to what you're talking about, or I'm not, it's not in my mind, but I believe it was the February meeting that we uh, voted not to award the bid to Castile, and at that meeting, you directed me to take this architect approach. I, th I think you're right on your time frame there, because it was in January uh, that, and I don't know, Mr. Grant read this up, but it was the January minutes that, uh, that the city manager recommended that both bids be thrown out due to the great disparity between them, and that an architect uh, would be uh, engaged to, uh, to handle the situation. 
in February. Uh, also, one, one of the points that I have is that uh, <clears throat> uh, Councilman Rusk made a motion that would the staff bring back a minimum of two or three quotes from architects with fire station construction experience for council to consider. Does the architect that is included in this dying bill have fire station construction experience? Yeah. Don't think so, but I, I can't guarantee that. But I mean, you know, we, we were asking for experience. And, and that sort of defeats what we even, even asked for. Now, we did get, um, of course, four bids. And I haven't made any secret about how I feel about using an architect. I mean, I, I know enough to know I don't know enough to do what needs to be done in that respect and that you need to look to a professional organization whose business it is theirs to do these things for your assistance and, and that's what I'm looking at. I, don't, I think too many times we try to do things ourselves and, and we don't know enough about it to, to do it properly and, and um, to carry it through in a, in a really efficient manner. You know. Seems like uh, we never have time to do it right, but we got plenty of time to do it over, and I don't—I really don't—don't don't want to do that. So, um, I, I, you know, I've, I've said it many, many times. I prefer that we have an architect. Any of those four architects that are listed there, in my opinion, can probably do the, do the job. I. I you know, I, I have little doubt that they can do what needs to be done. So I'm not, I would not push it. I don't, it doesn't really matter to me which one it is, but I think it ought to be one of those architects. Uh, the architectural fees was what we had set out and, and essentially bid out. Uh, and that they ranged from about 57,000 to 90 something thousand, I believe. I don't have it right with me, something like that. But three of them were within 57, to like 61 or two. So that told me, you know, that's probably a pretty decent range of what we ought to be expecting. That's what we ought to be expecting. They were close. They didn't, one of them wasn't double the others, you know, all the others. Um, and and Mr. Mr. Cummins is right that the estimates that these, these architects, they were actually proposing their fee and then they just threw an estimate out there. Well, that estimate, you can't compare that to bids. It's possible, uh, the, only, the only cost that we're gonna know when we have an architect handle this process from beginning to end is what that low bid is when it's bid out. That's when we're gonna know. That's what it's gonna cost. It's very likely it could be less than 1.2 million or 1.1 million or, or whatever. But well, at least we would have an architect uh, would handle the process bid it out properly and you know it needs to be uh, uh, I think we need to do it right and 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 that's how would you feel if Castillo was the only bid? I would be happy if he's the low bid with a, an architectural architect that had experience and designed the fire station just tickle me to death. No, Local. But would you overlook the fact that they haven't had the experience like requested on the building of fire station? The experience? No. I mean, you just said. No, you, I'm talking about the architect. I'm talking about okay. the builders. Well, builders don't always necessarily, uh, you know, I mean, your contractor may not have done a fire station, but your architect will make sure it's done like it's supposed to be done. Mr. Cook, 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 Cook. One last question. Mr. Scrooge, excuse me. You said in your statement, I don't know if it was a misstatement, or but you said design, build, and architect. That's what this is. That's what Castillo is. Architect, design, build. That's exactly, I believe that's what you said, and that's exactly what Castillo is. The architect is in there. So, are we going about this without an architect? The answer is no. The architect is there. You're acting as if there's no architect going to be involved in this. <coughs> there, there is. There is an architect, but he doesn't work for the city. That's, that's one of the problems I have, too. I, I well, want the I, architect working for me, not for the... And I saw exactly what happened over here with this guy working for the city. And he got fingers pointed at each other. It was not my fault. It's the, it's, the, it's the builder's fault. Now, Castillo, you won't have that. you got one company. 
Mr. Uh, Mr. Yes, I, I don't want to go back and try to re rehash what, I, what motion I made, but I remember the issue came up and Susan tried to correct it in the next meeting and she, we couldn't change the motion as it was passed, but I know the intent and I don't disagree with that. That had to do with management, construction management or something, didn't it? Or okay, administration. That, was a that was a separate meeting, a separate issue? Sir. Separate meeting, separate issue? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm saying the issue was with, uh, adding the construction management or construction administration to it. That, it doesn't matter. Can I modify my motion? <laughs> well, we have a motion in a second. Yeah, but I want to make a I can withdraw it and modify the motion. Here's what I'd like sure. to do. Simply, mechanically, we'll figure out how to do this. But if we could have an assurance that Castile will either use full time a, a, a architect that has had experience uh, with that fire station, building fire station, or he will have one that signs off on those plans after his architect drafts them. So we're going to have double coverage. I don't think we can deal with hypotheticals like that at this point. Oh, I, I think we got to move along. No, no, we, yeah, I want to move. That's why I want to do this. I want to move along. For Castillo, we'll accept his bid as long as he has an independent <coughs> architect that has experience building fire stations. Well, and that was the opportunity to start with, I think. Well, we did, we're imposing that upon him now if he'll, if he'll accept the bid. Mr. Governor, yeah. So we got bonds posted, both surety. Oh, yeah. Payment and performance bonds. You'll have that on the, when you have the architect too. You'll have the same thing. It's a local guy. Uh, I, I just ask, are you prepared to spend three hundred fifty thousand dollars more? Are you council members who are going to vote against is prepared to spend three hundred fifty thousand more? You can't guarantee that's the problem. No, are you prepared to do that? I think we're prepared to spend whatever it takes to do the fire station and do it right. Well, can I, can, so I withdraw, can I withdraw my motion and amend it then? Can I, I want to amend it? Can I do that, Bobby? I swear well, you can withdraw your motion, but we can't. We sent out requests for proposals that didn't say you have to have an architect that has this experience. If we now no, say, no, can't do it. Can't, so, can't. So I don't think we can do it. Can't do that. Okay. Do you want to make this work? Leave your motion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Three hundred thousand. Roll call. Rest. I'm going to pass my vote to Arizona. I didn't vote for this. Am I passing this vote to Arizona? Is that a non-vote? Non no, it's not a non-vote. I wanted you to come back to me. I want him to be first. Uh, no, you're going to vote first this time. You're going to vote. It's time we're going to do a roll call right around. So you vote yes or no? Yes. Ms. Grant? No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No. Okay. Yes. You just did not kind of much. All right. Do we have a uh, do we have another motion or anything at this point? Yeah. I I'd, I'd like to ask the city manager to go out to back to Castile and ask him if they can split that out for us. Can I do that? You ask him. I'm not going to give up on that. I'm going to I'm going to hire one of the current architects to design a new fire station based on input from the fire chief, city staff, and the county. After we have an approved design for the station, the city will develop an RIP for construction based on those specifications. Are you making a recommendation? Which one or just one? Yeah. One of them. We can't do it that way. Yeah. We're not going to do that. He says you need to name yeah, it. Yeah, I think if you want it to happen, you have to make it. I don't have one. Pick one. I'm trying to see. Uh, Mr. Bowman? Yeah. 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 The low bid? Uh, the low bid. Was that Sutton? That was. It was. That we um, hire uh, Sutton to design the new fire station. Okay, do we have a second? I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Yes. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, before you vote on this, mm -hmm. I would like to ask uh, since you voted on it, have we checked the references on Mr. Sutton? It, Mr. Cummins, do you have any? I can ask that. I, I, I'm familiar. I'm personally familiar with the uh, uh, capabilities of that organization. Well, so. But do you have any references, Mr. Collins? Do you have any? Yes. Could you read them to us? Are you going to do that? I can. I, I, I will not ask you to do that because I think it might be improper if depending okay. on, on who it's coming from. 
you know? Well, <laughs> but, you know, I'll pass it over to one of the other, or you can read it. No, I, I, I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to say uh, I don't think we should be voting for an architect without adequately checking out. Well, I think, I think we well. should do that. I think that could be a condition to, of the motion. Sure. We certainly don't want to hire somebody who's not qualified that's got a bad, bad reference. And, and sure, we're willing really to. Did we accept a bid before checking references? Is that what we're saying? Uh, may I answer that, Mr. Mayor? Go ahead. Uh, we ask for references when the RFP is submitted, and then we check those references. If we feel that there's a consideration to be made on that particular supplier, but that nothing was serious enough that you felt that it should be taken off of the uh, the, the bidding list, right? Uh, no, because I thought we would come to a more realistic decision and pick the low bidder, so I didn't take it off. I can't really remove them. That's a okay. council decision. Absolutely, absolutely. We have a, we have a motion. Certainly, it is uh, subject to a, uh, a, 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 I guess, a good what, reference. What would be the acceptance? Excuse me. But what would be the acceptance? I see under design construction schedule, he has no. Uh, he has no schedule, and he is not giving us one here. What if it come back? That's going to be two years. Yeah. Watch this three months. You're going to be happy then? I, I, I would be happy. Yeah, I would. But I would too. But you. But it's not. And but the thing you. you, you if you want it your way, you're willing to give. Okay. That's right. Okay. We have a motion and we have a second on the table. Do we have any other discussion? Sure. Uh, the motion is is that uh, uh, Sutton Architectural Services be selected as the architect to design and how else was it to uh, work with the county and the fire chiefs in order to uh, design a fire station and carry that through. Is that provisional upon the vetting of this guy? And if the, well, if there's going to have to come back with a, there's going to be a contract. I mean, there's yeah, going to be a contract to vote on anyway. Okay. We just need to know who to start talking to about a contract. Yeah. Okay. All right. Guess I'll get a roll call vote on this. Mr. Russ? <laughs> Can't pass it, I guess, can I? Um, the, the motion is, yeah, no. Okay. Scrant. Yes. No. You don't have to vote anyhow. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> you knew you were going to get there. I love it. You know, I, mean, I, I know, know you could do that for a long time. I know you could. Okay. Thank you, John. The uh, item B, uh, discussion and action of fee waiver request from Northside Cherokee <laughs> Hospital. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's open it first. Wait, let, let's get the uh, 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 motion. In. Yeah. Yeah. If you want it. Oh, make the motion. Yeah. Well, okay, go ahead. You can, you've got it. Yeah. I don't know why we keep deviating from standard procedure, but that's fine. Uh, naturally, in charge of finances of the city, my first inclination is to never reduce revenues. But in lieu of the economic engine that Northside Hospital was going to bring to this city and discussions with staff, I have made uh, come to the conclusion that as a good partner we should ask for a motion to accept the fee waiver request as submitted. So wait, 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 wait a minute now. Hold on a minute now. I believe I, I've got to re I request a motion at the proper time. Okay? Well, I thought you were recognized. I recognized him, but we had got. I'm going to. I'll request a motion at that time. But I, I tend to uh, agree with Mr. Cummings quite honestly that. Uh, this is going to be a, um, uh, a, a real boost in our entire area in that, uh, you know, whatever we do, we need to do some, uh, we, we need to make an effort to, to show in good faith that we, we appreciate them being where they are here in Canton and we appreciate what, 
what's going to happen to our city as a result of them being here. Uh, it's going to make a lot of difference in the next few short years. It's going to be quite amazing, I think. So uh, I think we need to do something. So, Mr. Goodman? Okay. Second. Okay. He made a motion to, uh, what, 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 what is your motion? Grant the waiver. Grant the waiver. Grant the waiver. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, we have, uh, who seconded that? Okay. Those of us, doesn't matter. Uh, any other discussion or questions? If not, those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Okay. Um, I don't see we're going to make that one fairly fairly quick. Uh, I'm not going to accommodate the historic preservation uh, members tonight. Uh, I have uh, had a fairly lengthy slate of good qualified folks and intend to, to do that. But five members I, seems to me to be such a, uh, a small number and particularly knowing that Many of our volunteer committees, if you have one or two out on a five-member board, then, then you really don't have many. Uh, uh, it's too important of an issue that they're going to be dealing with to just have two or three there making those decisions. So I've asked the city attorney to bring back uh, an uh, amendment to the Historic Preservation Ordinance allowing us to have seven members in lieu of five. Because, you know, if you have two out then, you still got five members, and I think that would make more sense. And I think it gives us an opportunity to include even even more of some of the qualified folks who, who have really want, wants to be there. So I do, have, I do have a list of seven that I would recommend. I think are going to be, uh, would be very good. And uh, assuming uh, the council is willing to uh, agree that a seven member board would, would probably function even better. Do you have that list available? No, not, not tonight. I'm sorry, but I will, I will have it at our work session in, in, uh, in, in May. And then we'll vote. Uh, okay. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, discussion of possible action on uh, resuming downtown Canton parking enforcement. Mr. Young. Thank you. Um, as we discussed at the last meeting, uh, we voted to suspend parking enforcement for 60 days and that time has passed so we need to decide either to resume or for the time being stop enforcement at all and myself and Mr. Grant I went over our meetings and our recommendations and we believe that we should resume enforcement as soon as is practical for the police department following up education period and making the changes that we recommend to the parking, the time limits on the various and the appropriate signage. And we recommend that the first citation be a warning and the technology can't handle that. Um, with the sec second citation being an actual ticket. And we will need to set a time period for that. And we can either make that part of this or we can set that at another time with further discussion if we'd like. Uh, we say the chief, in, in our meeting, the chief mentioned 30 days and we think that's a good time period. Um, and then we also act, recommend adding an online payment system for parking fines. That was one of the major complaints that people seem to have about the system. Okay. So I would move that we resume enforcement as soon as practical with these uh, changes and recommendations. Okay. Second. Anyone? I have a motion and a second. Uh, Mr. Cohn? Uh, the only point or discussion with the chief, uh, we feel August 1st will be the time which we'll need. We have to hire parking enforcement people, of course, again, but go through that process. So at least July 1st, but more preferably August 1st, to restart it. Uh, relative to the first warnings uh, and discussions with the chief, he's and I think he also discussed with you, we don't like the idea of renewing the warning every 30 days. We 
uh, are against that idea. We don't have a problem with the first warning, but once people get to know the system, then it'll be the warning, uh, no ticket or maybe a ticket, and then another warning because 30 days have passed. We think that to a particular vehicle, a uh, single warning is sufficient, warning them of the parking. And after that, we issue tickets and we don't try to keep track of how many days since we issued the last warning until we can uh, issue the next warning. That is the recommendation from the chief. I um, mean, you can put anything you want in the course. Well, so, I, have, I have no problem with that. I think, I think though, uh, you know, personally, I kind of lock it every 30 days. And, and uh, if, if, even if somebody were to figure out the routine and get that free ticket once a month, it's going to be a whole lot better than it is now, still. A whole lot better. What, can I make a suggestion on that? that? You could do that every 30 days, but rather than the police department having to keep track of that, let that be something that be, it'll be a defense. You could make it, you could make it ordinance, it says, but, but so that the, it's a, who has the burden of keeping track of that is what we're talking about. I think the system can do that, but it, it's, it's not that big a deal. I mean, I, it will be better regardless, I think, either way you did that. The other, the other thing is, I would like to, while we're getting this fresh start, our ordinance doesn't match with what we're doing because we have zones, but our ordinance talks about number of feet. I'd like to redo the ordinance to match with the zone and just say you have to move the zones within the time period. Did we, I'm sorry, did we uh, decide to do away with the shuffle ordinance, part of the ordinance, or do we want to keep enforcing that? I believe we wanted to keep it because I think that was one of the major That's issues. The major so, oh. and I would say on the on the on the warning, I'm okay with not doing it every 30 days because, as you say, once they figure out the system, and, and they will, we we know that. But, but I think you know the less, the simpler we can make it, that everyone understands the rules and plays by them equally. I, I think. And if that's the chief's recommendations, we, we certainly trust him. He's been very involved in, in, in our recommendations, so yes. I'd be okay with that. Ms. Rivera, you have something? Just a, a curious question. I was witness to two near collisions this week on the street because of long bed trucks parking on the street. And I was wondering, I, we can't tell people they can't drive a long bed truck, but are there some? <laughs> You're guilty, aren't you? Uh, I was wondering, is there any, do those people get a ticket for sticking out further than the lines? Uh, a car had to go around the back of the truck and nearly took out another car because they were leaving their lane to get around the bed of the truck? It's very difficult. It is very difficult to see sometimes if a big truck, it may be sticking out, but also, you know, backing out. A lot of times, even even in my truck, if there's an SUV or something parked beside me, you can't see coming, coming, you can't see. You just have to ease back and hope nothing crunches. You know? I think the, the, the part that might help on the trucks is that they are required to pull, and correct me if I'm wrong, the chief is still here, has to pull all the way up to the curb. They can't be... I think you've got to be within an inch or an inch and a half of the curb. If they're sitting here with six inches to the curb and sticking out, that's a violation. Is that right, a fire? Do you know that? I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, but I know even with like with a four-door F-250, even if you pull all the way to the curb, you're still sticking out. Yeah, you're still going to be sticking out, but I know what Sandy's saying. Oh, yes. I have to swerve to avoid them, too. <laughs> And this is a this a work in process. This is just our first sort of uh, effort to address all the issues that were brought during our last phase of enforcement, and it's absolutely subject to change as needs change, uh, as more businesses come into town, as for example the Jones Building deal when that goes through and that starts then the situation will change and we will probably need to do some tweaking at that point. But this is just our first effort to address the need, the problems that were raised during our last 
Well, I, I want to thank you both for what you've done on that because you, I think you've done a good job, and I think it's it's reasonable, uh, and I think it will help accommodate some of the problems and resolve some of the problems that we've had uh, in the past. Sir, one of the other refinements, uh, Chief Mitchell, uh, is going has suggested and I think is going to follow through on is this because of the angle of the parking <laughs> spots, uh, which makes it difficult to see uh, and. The last time one of the major issues we had was tickets being issued because uh, a tire touching a line, uh, just touching a line, that will no longer be a citation. But if, if you're actually over a line, then then uh, there'll be a t ticket issued. But but uh, be a little bit of common sense uh, <laughs> uh, involved in, in, the, in the new enforcement. So. Okay. Mr. Mariska, sure. I was going to suggest that maybe if you. Uh, Take your motion, we'll and withdraw it until he does the ordinance. But we'll plan to move ahead with the schedule as we got it, um, because you're gonna have to come back with the ordinance because there's probably changes to it anyway. Is that correct, Mr. Well, I'd, I'd like to do the zone thing, but if that's not, but if the rest of it, I don't know if it's ordinance or not. That's the first. Uh, well, not the start or. Well, the warnings and all that. I don't need to think through that for a bit. Well, if you'd like to review, let's just we, let's do that. We, and we and bring something and they can proceed on the assumption that we're going to do that. Right. We'll bring that in May. If we okay. we say August first, if we go yeah. ahead and agree to that, uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay. Well, then I'll withdraw the motion. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, discussion and action on the inflow infiltration study proposal. Uh, Mr. Cummins? Yeah, if I can ask Mr. Tavian to come forward, he can discuss that. Uh, what we're basically asking is for a task order with pull it out Brown and Caldwell do an I and I study. Uh, that was discussed at the last meeting and it's I'm trying to find the total amount of it. It's one twenty nine nine I believe. Staff recommends giving Brown and Caldwell that task order. I think we might want to we might want to get a uh, a motion here and then discuss it. We have a motion. So we'll uh, have a second. Okay. Now let's go. Anyone have any questions? Are you going to you here for questions or anybody have any questions? No, I'm just going to say, going to say if, you, if you want, I got the representative from Brown Caldwell here too. If you need oh, help. yes, you did. Yes, you did. How long is it going to take to get this thing started rolling and we start seeing some get be started? Yeah. Um, you can get started. He will, he will prove it tonight. We can start tomorrow. Uh, we have a motion. Mr. Grant? I was just going to ask if, if, any, um, if we did look at any competitive bids or any pursuing more estimates or anything? No. Okay. And that's why I have an issue. I mean, I, I voted against the demand contracts for this very reason for, for large items such as this, $130,000, I think, of even, uh, is, is a large amount of money, and, and, and uh, I don't think it's necessarily appropriate for demand services. I'm sure they'll do a nice job, but that was my concern, so. Anyone else? Um, I can just respond to Mr. Grant's comment. Uh, the concept on the task order is that if you go out all the time with RFPs, we have several engineering firms and we sort of rotate them. As you notice, we're not always using Brown Caldwell or any one of those. We rotate them around. And what it allows us to do is to, when they come back, is to change the scope of the project with them to get it if we feel something is out of line. If you use the RFP process, what you'll do, unless you're awarding to all of those that might come in at this level, you will discourage uh, bidders from bidding if they don't eventually get some work because it costs significant amount of money to put to answer an RFP and put in that proposal. Uh, it's probably similar to your business, Bill. You get a customer that or non-customer that calls you several times and ask you to put together a quote and you never get any work, at some point in time you stop putting quotes together. And that's the same idea around the task order process. Uh, you know, again, you can, you know, we can do an RFP, but 
uh, I don't know that it'll create any more success than what we have because a lot of this is unit pricing based on estimated hours to do the job. So, but you know, as uh, selecting a uh, professional service, you don't have to take bids. I know that you don't have to. Uh, and and yet there is, uh, you know, and, and if if there's something built in built in there along the way that keeps them honest, you know, I mean, you got to kind of do that. Or, or maybe fees will tend to creep up if you continue to use them and, and don't have some measure by which you can, you can keep them control. But there's also a, a fiduciary or, or a, a trust type relationship that you do have to deal with, with some people. And if you find people that work well with you and do you a great job and you always find, after you check occasionally along the way, that their fees are reasonable, uh, then you know I can I, I can understand that, we, that uh, you know you don't have to bid everything out like that necessarily but but I think it's good to once in a while to have a have a reality check on it you know and you need to do that. that's exactly why that we selected the firms that we did was because of the relationships that we've had in the past and, and knowing their work ethic and Okay, uh, we have a we have a motion in a second, I believe. Who, who made the second? Who made, who okay, made it? okay. Uh, <laughs> any other question or discussion? All right. In uh, those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. All members vote for the motion, except for Mr. Grant. Okay. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> The next item, discussion and action on approval for mayor to sign contract with Arcadis for $22,500, which was approved by council on January 22nd, 2015. Yeah, it's just a formality. We didn't <coughs> put in that, at that point on January 22nd, to authorize you to, or to ask and instruct you to sign it. So we're just doing that of what's already been approved by council. We have a motion. Move to approve. Motion second. Any okay. other discussion or questions? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voted for the motion. Okay. Uh, Mr. Goodman, discussion of the odors emanating from the International Marble. Yes, uh, we had a discussion with International Marble and Mr. Townsend and some other citizens back a few weeks ago about an odor that's coming from our industrial park over there, just uh, up the hill from our park, new park, Edelwall Park that's opened up and of course across the creek from our other park. So uh, we, uh, in the last few weeks, I've had several calls from people visiting our park, and it's, it's getting a lot of views, which is great. But um, particularly, in particular, winds are not blowing, um, which they haven't much this week because of all the rain. It just kind of sits in them and they kind of down in a bowl anyway. And the odor has gotten horrendous at times. Um, I've had more than 10 calls on this myself. Um, and I wanted to bring this to, to council's attention and also our, our people that are here in attendance. And uh, Mr. Townsend and, and one of his neighbors is here tonight. And um, I think that we need to contact, someone needs to contact International Market once again and see if they're planning on doing anything about this because the health of these children down there on that playground, they're going to be there hours. They're not going to be there for a few moments. Uh, a, lot of them, a lot of the adults as well. But I will tell you, <coughs> I personally got on at Riverstone, headed back to my exit, which is the very next exit there, and on 20, coming into Main Street. And I was, I had the air conditioner on, but it drew some of those fumes right in my car, and, and I, I smelled it immediately, and it just was very nauseating. I actually called the mayor and told him about it. I said, are you smelling it? He said he was out of town, so he was not. But uh, it was very strong. Very, this week, I was at Wendy's, and I got out, and I started sneezing immediately. And 
I worked in the plastics industry for 35 years, so I know the smell really well. Um, and I was over at Heritage, you know, right, right behind Heritage Park. So it came across the river that way. Now I've had people call me from Cherokee Street, from Gannett Street, all over the place, telling me they're smelling the smell and they want to know if something can be done about it. So that's the reason I'm bringing this up. I, I, it's not help, not a healthy thing to do. Are you okay? Are you got a motion to do something? I would like to make a motion that yes. Yeah, well, I've just explained you, but I, I'd like to like to get a motion, make a motion that we investigate it a little bit with our people and also look at you know nothing else, you know. Get a meeting with International Marble and then move forward if we have to look toward a nuisance type uh, okay. violation. You just formulate, he's formulating his motion here. I don't think he's got it yet. But, but Jack and I actually went out and met with them. He came and listened to Mr. Townsend the night he did the public input. And uh, I think our ramification, the thing, that the, the methods we have statewide with the EPA, EPD, whatever it is, uh, are limited. We, we, yeah. we don't seem like we have a lot of options. I think the only real option is for Bobby to look at what we can do on a nuisance uh, situation, because I don't think we have another option. So it doesn't matter what we talk to these people, because if we don't have anything to, to teeth, we have no teeth. I do know that, that under under our, our code there, uh, nuisance code odor is is, is a nuisance yeah, it can be I, it might be the catch 22 the only way we can get them i, I don't know what else we can do I, I, I understand epd is supposed to be sending some information you know they're probably not going to do anything but they're probably uh they're supposed to be sending their results from the public hearing in the next week or two mr Townsend. could, could i just make a little uh, short no. I know you. I know you're not used to me making short things, but can I make a little short statement? Are you I'll, I'll stop you in a minute. Have okay, that. okay, that's fine. <laughs> the, the one thing I want to tell the council, and y'all heard most of everything I've had to say, <laughs> but the one thing that uh, that I would like for you to think about, and I know with the with the new parks down to the river that uh, it's important. The gas that they emit is heavier than air. So as I was telling Mr. Goodwin, a lot of times when there's no wind blowing, it has more effect than if there's a wind blowing. Now, in the last couple of weeks, I haven't had a bit of problem with it because the wind hadn't blown in my direction. So when you, when you think about the odor, uh, if there's real strong wind, it sort of blows it away. But when the wind's not blowing, like in the summer, it it tends to settle. I just, you know, I just. Well, you know, you need to, I know you will, but you let us know, you know, when that wind starts coming your way again, okay? Ooh. No problem there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't actually smelled it. I've been out in my yard a little bit in the last week or two, and I haven't actually smelled it again, but then I'm kind of down in a hole, too, and anything could be going on over me if it did. But you're you're right on the front line there. When you, if Northwest wind comes, you're going to get it first. Well, I talked to I talked to uh, uh, Comcast over there. I talked to the president and the uh, lady that was here. And they, he's actually trying some things. He had called me and talked to me, and he says, uh, we're going to try something, let us know how it turns out. Well, it's simple for me. I go out in the backyard, I smell it, I don't smell it. That's, that's about as simple as you can get. But I will say Mr. Anderson is trying. I believe he'd be willing to work with us. You know, uh, what happened about the gas line being replaced there? Uh, what? They, uh, the, the EPD discontinued their use of the RTO. And without the RTO, there's no gas. gas line requirements. Uh, so the thing is their production dropped below what EPD controls. And that, that's basically where we're at now. And the EPD hadn't issued any uh, 
consent orders as yet on what was going to happen in the meeting yet. And, and thank you for the meeting. Mr. Thank you. Yes, I guess what we got might have to do if we're going to pursue it under a nuisance. I don't know if our ordinance uh, body <coughs> describes what a nuisance is in detail enough that where we can use that ordinance effectively if we needed to. It's meant to be vague for that yeah. reason. Well, it's meant to be vague. I don't. It says it says odors, not a whole lot more specific. Specific you can get like that. But you get odors from the barbecue place over here. It has, it, has, it has to be an odor that causes you to be unable to enjoy your property. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we've got a school and two parks. You know. Well, I'm just trying to pursue but to understand if we're going to follow with nuisance. I know. They're going to put up a high fence and say, what, what is a nuisance? You know, that is going to put it in our court to prove that it is truly a nuisance. Mr. Mr. Desire, Mr. Desire, Mr. Desire, wouldn't we be required to have a specific complaint in hand if you, if you, if we follow this idea that it's a failure to allow someone to enjoy their property, that that individual would have to then file a complaint with us in order to then go out and possibly cite. I think we sort of had that. Now. Well, we, we well had, I think it had the plus form of complaint. If, if you can spell it in our park, we don't need anybody else to make it. No, no, right. then we can do it. But, but who's, that's subjective. Well, odors are hard because it's hard to prove. Not that odor. Well, I understand. <laughs> it's, it's always just so when you're, if you're in court, you're talking about, I smelled it. And if, you but know that odor. I've, I've smelled it. <laughs> I have to. Yeah. We can we can cite we can sue we I mean there are things you can do with this I, I don't know that you can decide tonight I mean it's other than to do something oh, I'm not sorry. But, you look, but you look at the paper mills down South Georgia all right they have that issue and that smell is still there that smells like money to them though yeah you know? <laughs> but, it does. But, but a lot of those mills exist prior to people that might be offended yeah. by the other yeah. here you have this thing came in the last few years. Too. Probably some of the only jobs, you know, yeah. down there. Oh, absolutely. Some places it is. Oh, absolutely. Um, okay, well, uh, I, I, I guess where we are is that maybe. Well, I'll just, I'll make a report about what I think the options are. How about that? Okay, well, I know Jack had made a uh, suggestion that maybe we, uh, you know, some of the staff and council members maybe try to meet with to see what is being done, if anything. And, let them know of our concern and yeah. you know, do that. I don't sort of be a fair first step, yeah. I think, maybe. Okay. All right. I don't think we need anything else on that then. Okay. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah, I have a motion, no second. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. I think we just, yeah, no more. Okay. Um, Okay, now report on the National Main Street Conference. We should have had that at the beginning, shouldn't we? Yeah, that would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we didn't want you to leave. Matt and Matthew. Why Thank you, Mayor and Council. Just to uh, briefly talk about and summarize the, the National Main Streets Conference is exactly what it sounds like. It is the big conglomerate conference where you have Main Street programs from across the country. And they've been from everywhere, from Milwaukee to Detroit. So they just happen to be in Atlanta this year. And I will say that our Main Street program took great advantage of it. We sent seven members and a volunteer for the very first day, which is really outstanding. The, the basis of the program was built on what's called TEAM. T is for teamwork, A is for across, I'm sorry, uh, T is for teamwork, E is entrepreneurship, A is across, and then M is Main Street. So it's team teamwork, entrepreneurship, across Main Streets. And so all the breakout sessions really expounded upon that. They talked about 
best practices and tools that local Main Street programs could implement and, and further improve the programming and improve the environment for businesses as well as make uh, increase the tourism and increase the traffic and do what Main Streets do, which is which is make downtowns thrive and, and make them great. So Miss Miss Pat Gold is gonna expound a bit further on a lot of the information that was covered, but to say the least, uh, over the three days the content was extremely rich and over time is information that our local Main Street program, some information, could, I mean, some, some tools could be implemented almost immediately. There are other best practices that could be phased in over time that would further enhance the, the existing programming we have. So I'm gonna turn it over to our Main Street Board President, Ms. Paco. Thank you, Matthew. And I just want to um, say how well Matthew and I are working together. We're very excited at the um, coming interviews that we're going to have shortly to hopefully acquire a wonderful new Main Street director. But in the interim, Matthew and I are working very, very well together. Um, I think we complement each other well, and our board has really stepped up to the plate and helped us also. Um, over the three days of the conference, more than 1,200 attendees from all over the United States were privy to different courses dealing with economic development, restructuring, organization, historic preservation, design, and bringing buildings, old buildings, into green buildings, which I think is something that's very, very important for us, especially um, taking over the ownership of Building A and Building B in the future. Um, in addition to these sessions, there were also workshops, city tours, and one-on-one -on -one sessions with experts in fields from all over Main Street. I had people sitting next to me from Olympia, Washington, and there were people from Wyoming and Wisconsin, and it was wonderful sharing all the ideas. Jeff Brown, Joseph Martin, Ray DeLuca, Nikki Farley, Lisa Farilla, Corey Wilson, all attended. Most of them were fulfilling their basic obligation of Main Street training. Um, Jeff and Matthew and I split up so that we could cover more ground and we got together and decided okay i'm going to this one you're going to that one so we could get all the information we possibly could pull together to benefit our program this was my first national conference but my fourth introduction to training with main street and every year i go i just find it exciting and something that we want to bring home and implement in our town just as an example of a few of the courses I thought this one would appeal to, to the council. One of the sessions I attended was how to revitalize your downtown on a budget. I thought that was a good one. 10 ways to restore your downtown for $500 or less. That was another good one. I also went to um, a session entitled Using What You Have, Why Old Buildings Are Perfect Candidates for Going Green, Helping Your Prospective Businesses Get the Funding They Need, and How to Develop a Perfect Board in 12 Acts. Opportunities like this not only educate us, they energize us and excite us. They also give us a chance to put into practice one of my favorite sayings, and some of you have heard me say this many times, and that is, admire and acquire. There's no reason for us to reinvent the wheel every time we want to start a new program. If we can get ideas from another community, a town from Washington State, from Wisconsin, or find out what their failures were, we can learn so much from these other communities, and we did exactly that. We came back, we're excited, we're energized, we're looking forward again to working with a new director. I also want to point out and give a pat on the back to Camille Ways, who is our IT person. All of you know her very well, but she is so talented. She's been designing our ads for First Friday events. She's come up with this flyer that gives events we've got going all summer long. They're in the magazine rack downstairs, and we hope some of you will pick them up. She's been amazing to us. She's a huge help. And um, again, we're excited for our future. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Matthew, thank you very much. Very good. Very good. We got a lot going on now, and, and we're just on the brink of uh, a lot of things happening right downtown and around our city. So uh, we appreciate what Main Street does, and our economic development folks as well. All right, um, you have a, you have a report.
One thing. Okay. Uh, the next council meeting, I will introduce our new Parks and Rec director, who we have hired. He will be starting, uh, I believe, May 6th or something at that time, and he'll be introduced at the next council meeting. Uh, he is currently the recreational director from Milton. And he will come to us. And again, he'll be introduced at the next meeting. His name is Tom Gilman. Okay, good. Okay. Anyone else? Right. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. You're too quiet. I'm sorry. I'll get noisier. You're like that. Me, me. Um, the Cherokee County Arts Council would like to invite everyone to the Arts Festival May 16 and 17 from the hours of 10 until 5. This is our major fundraiser, and the Cherokee County Arts Council, of which I'm also president, wishes to thank the city for your support, everything that you're doing to make it work smoothly. I understand that the negotiations and the conversations with the police and the fire department have been extremely good and right. managing the, all the ins and outs of what goes into making the festival a success. And this festival brings in 10 to 15,000 people into our town for that weekend. So keep your fingers crossed there's no rain and come and see our artists. There will be 60 to 70 fine arts. There's Serenity Gardens, which is clean living, green living, healthy, natural products, a children's area with complimentary children's activities. And of course, there's no festival worth its salt without funnel cakes. I do believe it's illegal to have a festival without funnel cakes. And we have complied with that law. OK. All right. Thank you. Uh, I, I have one item I wanted to mention before we uh, entertain a motion to go into executive session, and that is at at, uh, at the end of our last uh, meeting, I believe it was, uh, April the 2nd, I made the announcement that uh, we would be holding a special call meeting on the 8th of April um, for the purpose of allowing the council to consider rescinding their denial without prejudice of the proposed Soleil master plan. Um, we had had a meeting just prior to that. Uh, some council members, myself, uh, uh, representatives from Soleil and uh, representatives from the Soleil Advisory Board. And as a result of that meeting, it was uh, a very good meeting. It was uh, concluded that uh, uh, they actually they had requested Soleil was requesting that we allow, that we rescind our denial without prejudice uh, so that, and that, so that they could withdraw their motion and that way they could come back at any time. Now, we had waived that time limit, we thought, but there was a state law out there that said on the zoning issues, you have to wait six months before you can resubmit. Our, the council's intent was to allow them to come back at any time. So even though we may not have agreed with the interpretation of that six month waiting period, uh, their attorneys were telling them that, you know, they need, that really need to be waived. So we were willing, uh, I think at least council would have considered, and I believe they were willing to rescind that denial without prejudice and to allow them to withdraw. And that was exactly what we were asked about doing. Okay. Well, <clears throat> as time got closer, I had, I had asked our city manager to uh, make sure that we have that request withdrawn from them in some form, email, writing, whatever, you know. We needed to have that. Because we needed that because what we didn't want to do was go there and rescind our motion and then the time frame go on beyond the period that we would have to make our decision and they would have been the applicant would have been granted everything they asked for and there wasn't anything we could do about it because we refused to make a decision. So as the week drew as the date drew closer to the to the Wednesday evening at six o'clock, at which a special call meeting was, we still did not have a request for withdrawal. And um, 
they had been asked for that on at least one or two two occasions and finally the, the uh, we received an email back from an attorney saying that they would not be requesting that withdrawal but that we could rescind it if we wanted to but they would not be they could not advise their client to ask for withdrawal and so we canceled the meeting on on Tuesday before the, the, the week before the next day so I, I I just know if everybody got that needed to know that needed an explanation of why it was canceled and all that but we have we have gone the extra mile with that uh, uh, proposal and uh, you know uh, there's some loose ends that needed to be tied up we've basically told them there's three areas that you know they can come back at any time and, and as soon as they tie up those loose ends I think that uh, you know there's no one on this council I think is going to prevent them from expanding so late. I don't think anybody wants to do that, but I think we need to we need to make sure we're in compliance with the ordinances and things are done appropriately, and and that's that's what we're going to do. So anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss litigation. So move. Right Those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. No. 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 No.